Uh, now let's first go to uh, Spencer Garbett, who's already obviously gotten some sun in Key West, Florida. You were out basking yesterday, weren't you, Spencer? Basking away in the sun. I like that segue, by the way. It yep. was very smooth. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> I, you could hear the skid marks, couldn't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Spencer is at the Mel Fisher Maritime Heritage Society Museum in Key That's West. That's right, which has dedicated itself as the largest collection of uh, Spanish artifacts that are found in the Florida Straits here. And this is their actual laboratory that I'm standing in. And we'll be showing you the process that once the uh, artifacts are taken out of the water, the painstaking process it takes to uncover them, preserve them, and uh, put them on display and what they can learn from them later on. All right. And, and what's the weather like down there? Pretty wonderful? It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked hot down in Key West, Florida. We go from the Mel Fisher Maritime Heritage Society Museum to the Human Gene Therapy Research Institute, and uh, thus the qualifying today's show is having the longest title for any remote. <laughs> uh, Gwen McGee is in Des Moines, Iowa. Collections of Spanish Renaissance artifacts, and we're going to join him right now, and he's going to tell us how they, how they uh, preserve all these beautiful things. Spencer, how are you? Good. Looking good right. in that vest, Spencer, got to tell you. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> And uh, we're, this uh, is a non-profit organization that was founded in 1982, and they preserve all, there's a large collection of Spanish um, artifacts that are found in those Florida Straits there. Now this is uh, Corey Malcolm, he's a head archaeologist here, and uh, what are we looking at here? Um, we're looking at an x-ray of what appears to be a candle snuffer. It looks like a pair of scissors at first, but it, and in the x-ray it looks like a, what we would call a candle snuffer. Okay, Lori, what they do is when they get the artifacts out from the bottom of the ocean, they x-ray them because they're covered with so much gunk from being in the, uh, under the bottom of the sea for so long that they have to x-ray them just to see what they are. And we have, actually have a little uh, tape of, uh, ooh, what's it, Bob? <laughs> they have a little tape. Can we roll that tape on yeah, uh, them? Yeah, we're seeing it now, Seth. Okay, great. Yeah. Now, what's, what's exactly the history? You have four different ships that are represented here. And what's the... Uh, a ship from the early 1500s called the St. John's Wreck. We don't know exactly when it was lost or its name. Uh, but we also have a ship called the Henrietta Marie from 1700, an English slave ship, and two materials from two Spanish galleons, the Atocha and Margarita, which wrecked in 1620. Okay, now, after, they, after we've x-rayed it, we know what they are. Do we have the uh, x-ray, the actual yes. exhibit? This is a piece. You can see why we had to x-ray it. It, it looks really nothing like it did originally. They get yeah. covered with sand and rust and shells. And okay, so what's the process then? Oh, we also have this, show this helmet here. This is a, what is this exactly? This is a conquistador's helmet, oh, an iron wow. helmet. It's, uh, or half of it, at least. Yeah, half of it, yeah. But uh, this is what it looks like when it's found. So Great. Let, we're going to look at the process now. We're going to show you exactly how they uh, go about. So we take, we have a cannonball right here. And this is what it looks like when it comes out. It's covered with all this gunk. And then what's the process? Well, we we can to knock to, this uh, stuff off? We can it. This may look a little brutal, and we don't do it uh, this uh, uh, violently, I guess, with most pieces. But uh, you can see we just mechanically remove the encrustation, and you can see what's inside, which is a perfectly preserved. Thing. What is that made out of? Is this all iron? Cast iron, yeah. Hold on one second, I want to get my fingers in there. Now, is this part of it, or how do you no, know what? You see the ball here, right here, the, the perfect sphere inside here, and then the, the buildup of encrustation around. Okay, so what's the next step in this uh, restoration the process here? Is, we have these tanks. What are these tanks here? These are called electrolytic reduction tanks, and what they do is they get the salt out of the metal uh, after nearly four or 500 years underwater. So after we x-rayed it, we chop away at the uh, concrete stuff, and then we put it, and what's this liquid that's here? sodium carbonate and it acts as an electrolyte and what we do is we give it a small charge opposite of what the ocean did and uh, these sit in here for this is just a desalting process right. and they're in here a year Lori these things sit in here for one year just to get all the salt out so you can see some of the salt is being extracted uh, from the iron balls Spencer, the cannonballs yes are those are all cannonballs was yeah that, most was, was that the site of some kind of battle um, was that this is site of some kind of battle with these cannonballs or a lot of... Uh, no, they just had to be well armed because there were a lot of pirates out in yeah, these waters, so they had to be able to defend them. Kind of like now. Okay, then the next step is we go over here, and what's, uh, what's this basic process here? What is he painting with? Uh, Dylan here is putting tannic acid on a piece that is finished in the electrolysis tank, and it's... Uh, Which preserves it, right? Okay, and then Bob, right over here, we have... Uh, the last step is, once everything's been preserved, Lori, you come in here, and this is Bob, and right. he makes an illustration 
of exactly what it is so everything can be filed away and then everything stored in an air conditioned climate controlled environment and everything's recorded on paper so they know what they have and that's a brief look that whole thing took about two years and later on we'll be showing you some of the treasures they found terrific stuff thank you very much Tom? thank you you ever wonder, Lori, if that guy, uh, the last guy we saw, he draws about 15, 20 cannonballs. He says, hell with this, I'm just going to use the first few drawings. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Who's going to know? Uh, probably well, not, though. Yeah, probably not. We're going to show you the actual uh, treasures that they have found deep within the ocean floor from the wrecks, and we'll be talking with an underwater archaeologist who will be explaining what these treasures are all about and what they mean. All right, Spencer, we'll be joining in just a moment. Okay. When McGee, having uh, given us a bit of an insider's view of what DNA really is, this hour turns her... Good morning. First of all, we showed you uh, the, some of the artifacts and how they restore them. Now we're going to show you some of the treasures and the jewels, and this is, the process is the same. I'm here with KT, and she's an underwater archaeologist, and this is a recreation of what they found in the bottom of the Atocha. And what are we looking at here exactly, KT? Well, this is uh, an example of what 47 tons of silver bars would look like. That's the equivalent of 47 solid silver cars that were right. on board the Atocha. Each of these bars is marked with the uh, initial... Yeah, I know, so they're monogrammed here, Bob. Can you get a shot? Look at that, Tom. The monogram. What is the uh, etchings on there? That would be the mark of the man who was sending it, the mark of the man who was going to receive it, the ever-present tax stamp, and the manifest huh. number, all on that 98% silver bar. So each one of these was going to a specific person that was owned by someone in particular. And this is all silver, right? Right, all silver, some copper ingots, and the ballast that would have been on the bottom. Okay, and what other, what other kinds of things did you find? Not just silver and, and bars, but what other kind of things do you find uh, on these uh, wrecks? Well, we found a lot of personal things and uh, many, many religious items. Much of the silver and gold in the New World was going back to the church. This is an emerald cross and ring that probably belonged to a very high-ranking religious official. Now, how did you find this? It was just on a wreck? And well, it was buried in about 20 feet of sand in that silver box you see in the bottom there. And when we opened it up, inside it looked just like you see there, the brilliant green. Barely could see the, the gold around it, just the green in the bottom of the box. So these are emeralds here, Tom. And, the, and if you look, you can see that there's a gold backing with some etchings yep. on it of St. Anthony and the emeralds are shining just on their own brilliance because they're not being lit from behind because they're all uh, cased in gold. Now there's a ring here. What can you tell us about this humongous ring that must have been on a very large man? You can sort of uh, picture Cardinal Wolsey with that huge ring on and yeah. the emerald is cut and fastened in such a way that you can see a cross in the very bottom of the stone. That's the way it looked when the other diver and myself opened up that box in 1982. Amazing. Now was it all just treasures and, and jewels or was there with their people or anything else that they would transport? Well, on the Atocha, there were 265 people. On the Henrietta Marie, which was an English slaving ship, there were hundreds of human lives on board that were uh, being sent to the New World from Africa to work in the plantations. Now, did any of these people survive at all, or, or did everyone just perish from uh, the sinking? From, uh, was it a hurricane, they get caught in a storm? Once again, a hurricane uh, befell these shipwrecks, and uh, there were found many, many, many of the shackles on board of the people that they were bolting below deck. Okay, now a lot of these people would die because of greed, because they'd be carrying this gold, and the ship would start sinking, and they'd just start grabbing bars of silver and gold and necklaces and rings, and then they'd jump in the water, foolishly, and they'd sink right to the bottom and die, so yeah, there's right. greed, there's a lesson in there. <laughs> yeah, what do we sure have here? Well, we have uh, a gold bar that's marked uh, 22 Whoa. carats, as you see here, and the tax stamp. Now, Tom, this is this is very heavy. It's about Spencer. two pounds, and Spencer. it's about worth $60,000. Yes, Tom? If you want, I can distract you for just a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. But here's some of the coins that they found. Here's a whole collection. Now, this is the actual coin, and how many of these did you find? Well, there were 250,000 supposedly on board the Atocha. We have found about 150,000. Uh, the average man would have to work about one month for one of those pieces. Tom, this is one month's salary in the day. This is uh, one year's salary in the day. And this is about a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now, there also, this is a button that was found on one of the buttons. There are 17 of these, and you've made it into a necklace. And then there was this ring that was found on the bottom. There's actually, there's an etching. I don't know if you can see it in the bottom. So it was an actual person that was here. Now, there's a lot of history here, and it's not just gold and silver and, and bars, but there's, there's a story behind each one of these and the people that were uh, represented and the history 
that was here with all these artifacts that are here and all these treasures. So, uh, like, thanks for joining us. Great stuff. And back to you, Tom. Really, it's fascinating to see all that and to, to have an idea how long it was there at this, the depths of the sea and all that. And, uh, exactly. And, uh, you know, uh, just uh, tell her to look over at the camera for just a <laughs> second. That's all you need. <laughs> all right, Spencer, in uh, Key West, Florida, right now, let's dip into the mailbag. Life is too plain, too simple, too boring. Then enter the warped world of the vacant lot. It's the best in twisted sketch comedy. Next. American set of weeper. Thank you very much, Miss. You are so smart. I can't believe it. Yeah. You want to know? I have it. I have it with you. Well, you hold your hand up to your face, and, and your hand is bigger. That means you're super intelligent. So that must mean I'm really a genius. thousand nine hundred and forty five frogs now apparently if you eat a frog you immediately think Jerry Lewis is a genius so it <laughs> works it works like that uh, joining us in Key West where he's sucking back on a few flags this morning Spencer Garbett is uh, in the conch 
Republic. Is that right, Spencer? I'm sorry, Tom. I can't hear you. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> wah. That's right. <laughs> the Conk Republic, in 1981, the U.S. Border Patrol set up a checkpoint up in Florida City, and they were checking for illegal aliens, which created this humongous traffic jam that went all the way down to Key West for three days. And it was a big uproar, and uh, the people in the Keys felt like they were being treated like a separate country. So uh -huh. they said, well, if you're going to treat us like a separate country, we're going to become a separate country. And hence, they established the Conk Republic. We will show you what that's all about, and I'm actually becoming a citizen, so I'll be dual citizenized You'll be this conked. morning. Yeah, I'll right. be conked. <laughs> Good. All right, Spencer and Key West. Joining us in Waukee, Iowa, where I understand we uh, had some audio problems earlier, so we don't know if we'll hear any talkie in Waukee, but we'll find out <laughs> as we go to Gwen McGee. Uh, Gwen, you... you, you so the question I have for you is, what constitutes a nation? Gee, I, I, I don't know, Laurie, what does? <laughs> we turned into Sesame Street all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> we get a like, nice rapport between Puppet and person. Who are the nations in your neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a question that, um, that uh, a lot of fledgling nations ask themselves when they're, they're trying to gain independence. Spencer Garbett is in a, a part of the Keys called the Conk Republic this morning, and it, it is a... Uh, a part that is looking for independence from the U.S. Now, Spencer, what's the story behind that? Uh, well, I'm, hold on, let me get my picture taken. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, Please, picture's being star. taken. That was a passport photo. You just witnessed an ugly passport photo <laughs> being taken. Uh, we're here at the uh, headquarters ceremonies for the Conf Republic, and we're going to find out what the Conf Republic exactly is, because to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure. Now, this is Peter. How are you this morning? Mm -hmm. And uh, you're the Secretary General. General of the Conk Republic. Now, what is the Conk Republic, basically? Well, the Conk Republic was born on April 23, 1982, after the United States Border Patrol had blockaded the Florida Keys at Florida. Wait, what is the Conk Republic, though, exactly? Well, when the United States Border Patrol blockaded the Keys, it created a 17-mile traffic jam. We know all that, but what is the Conk Republic? The Conk Republic is our tiny island nation. It's what we seceded from the United States. Where others failed, isn't that your motto? Where others failed is indeed our motto. <laughs> okay, so what now is it is it a separate nation from the from the US then as of right now? Well we do we do claim that we have sovereignty by virtue of adverse possession between sovereign nations. Because the United States has never reacted to our secession one way or another in going on thirteen years now. And we have celebrated our independence in what is known under the law as a public and notorious manner. We actually are a sovereign nation under international law. Okay. Now, what, what do you have? Do you have rules or regulations or passports and money Currency, and all that kind yeah. of stuff? Well, we're the first country in the, in the world that we know of that actually doesn't have any laws. But we do have passports. Oh, great. Man, oh, it's wonderful. Now, you have a passport but you don't have a U.S. passport. This is the only passport you have, is that I correct? I travel exclusively on my diplomatic passport for the country. Don't home. leave home without it. Don't leave home without it. And you can see the identification page. Yours is coming soon, Spencer. And I've been received by 11 different Caribbean nations. So this is a valid passport to the travel United through States other countries? America on Valentine's Day. I thought that was very nice and heartful thing to do, received for an indefinite period, Spencer? as well as Antigua. Yes, Lori, hold on a second. Yes, yes Lori. Do they pay taxes? Do you pay taxes? Well, not to the Conf Republic. We don't have taxes, and we need to raise money. Isn't this a, a great nation? No <laughs> taxes? Yeah, but do they pay U.S. taxes? All. When we need to raise money, we have a party. There you go. And we're at a bar, actually, to celebrate this moment. Now, can I get stamped here? My U.S. passport, oh, can yes. you stamp me here? I need to receive you into the Conf Republic. Let's see. Let's find a good spot here. How about right under Heathrow? There you go. You're now officially received into our time. Well, and is my other passport ready? That other it's from the right picture? I'm officially, this is my official Conk Republic passport, which enables passport? me to what? You need to sign your passport. Well, what does it enable me to do when I sign this? Well, you're now official citizen well, of the Conk Republic. Thank you very much. You're now an official citizen, well, almost. You've got the swearing-in ceremony yet. Uh, and uh, what does this entitle you to? I don't know. With that and 75 cents, I'll get you a cup of coffee. Yeah. Back the <laughs> Great. So what's the swearing-in ceremony, then? Well, let's steal your passport. Okay, we're sealing the passport as we speak. I am sealed, signed, and delivered. Now, what's the swearing-in ceremony? Repeat after me, Spencer. I, Spencer Garbett. I, Spencer Garbett. Do unceremoniously swear. Do unceremoniously swear. In spite of the fact my mommy taught me not to swear. In spite of the fact my mommy told me not to swear. 
to fulfill to the utmost of my ability. To fulfill the utmost of my ability. The noble mission of my tiny island nation. The noble mission of my tiny island. To wit. To wit. The mitigation of world tension through the exercise of humor. The litigation of. Mitigation. Mitigation. Of world tension. The world tension. Through the exercise. Through the exercise. Of humor. Of humor. So help me. So help me. <laughs> help me. Help me. Help me. <laughs> I'm officially in the citizen, dual citizen of the Conch Republic, and when we come back, we'll be meeting these distinguished cabinet members of the liquor cabinet and, and what their jobs entail later on. Okay, thank you very All much, right, Lori. Lori, yes? before you go away, because I, I, I know what you're thinking right now. Geographically, I, I don't think you do. What would, <laughs> what would it do? What would it do? That's exactly where she is. Gwen? Hey Tom, how you doing? Well, coming up in the next hour, we're here at the New Iowa program where women's truck drivers are on the move. Look at these massive trucks we've got here, 18 wheelers galore, and we're gonna road test them. This girl, a woman driver, is gonna go through this obstacle course, and the point is not to hit the egg. And to prove to our viewers that these are real eggs, um, Anthony, could you come here for a minute? We're gonna show you what women can do and see if she cannot break the egg. It's real. <laughs> it's real. The outside of him. Uh, uh, Spencer Garvet is in Key West, Florida. If you can see him, they're not ice. He is in the mm -hmm. Conk Republic. Spencer? Mm -hmm. Viva la Conk! Viva <laughs> la Conk! I have now a dual citizenship. One of the United States of America, two of the Conk Republic down here in Key West. I'm amongst the company of the Governor of Florida, the Queen of, Queen of England, and also Gant, our broadcast producer. And when we come back, we'll be meeting some of the distinguished members of the cabinet that runs the Conk Republic. You haven't been having the Conk breakfast special, have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Too many Morgan readers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Whoopee with the passport. Yee. Right across the street, Madison Square Park. That's where Suzanne Wong and Bob Cirillo is with all the half Conk uh, populace <laughs> right now. Spencer, good morning. That's more than appropriate. <laughs> about uh, 70,000 citizens in the Conk Republic, and about 22 of them, 2,200 of them, have uh, passports like I just received, and they're actually starting to form their own money, and this is a sample of it. The That's Conk Republic, good. this is $1, says we succeed where others fail, and it says $1 Conk, and on the other side, we'd rather eat Conk. Conk <laughs> dollar. Trust in business. So that's that. And we're now going to meet some of the distinguished members of the cabinet. Oh, my Peter's God. Peter's again with us here. How are you, Peter? Spencer. Good, Good to have you aboard. We're going to say hello to uh, Fred Cabanis, who's right over here. Now, you're the general. General. Excuse me. Not general. Public Air Force. Okay. And how did you uh, be, how'd you become a general of the Conk Republic? Uh, about 1991, I was flying my biplane in a, a MiG-23, flew overhead, almost ran into me. And I called it in on the tower, and they said they didn't have any traffic. And I said, well, there's a MiG coming in. They said, no, there's not. And I said, there is. And uh, sure enough, uh, Mr. Arrestes landed his MiG-23 at the Naval Air Station here in Boca Chica. So you knew that there was a MiG coming in before anyone else had picked it up? Yeah, we were right on the top of the How did you get your wings? Uh, it's an organization we have down here called the Wild Birdmen. It's, uh, it's, it's the members that either have been uh, in jail or lost their pilot license. There's about 40 of us now. So which one were you? I'm uh, both of us. Oh. <laughs> All right, who general. else do we have here, Peter? Rear Admiral Finbar, Second Sea Lord and Fleet Commander for the Conquer Republic Navy. That's Hume Cronin, right. Spencer. <laughs> <That's> exactly. <laughs> and down the line we have? My Undersecretary, Tim Smith. And? Gunnery Control Officer, Karen Clark for the CRNS Magic Carpet. Now, these distinguished cabinet members that we've just introduced you, Tom, we're now all going to get up. You get everyone get up and help us recite the conch. No, we do this pledge. Oh, we, we do, do this. We do this sitting, yes. We do I'm all. sorry. Yeah. Right. We do it lying down Please. sometimes, too. <laughs> <laughs> Please stay right. seated, everyone. Grab yourself a drink. And do we put our hands to our chest or anything or not? Well, we raise our left hand. Oh, okay. And we say, I pledge allegiance to the, the flag of our tiny island nation and to the republic for which it stands one nation under the sun indivincible where the liberty is true and the justice is divine all right we are now signing off
from the Conch Republic, known as Key West. All right. So much for separation uh, of church and state. Uh, indeed, that's uh, uh, it's one big blur, really. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or as, uh, as their, their, their motto is, seed, lame brain. Thank you, Spencer, and thank you, right. the Conch Cabinet. Right now, let's dip into the mailbag. What do you say? From the Conch Republic, known as U.S. All right. So much for separation of church and state. Indeed, indeed. that's a uh, one very, big blur, really. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or as, uh, okay, as their, their, their motto is, seed, lame brain. Thank you, Spencer, and thank you, right. the Conch Cabinet. Right now, let's dip into the mailbag. What do you say? I gave a letter to the postman. Dear Tom, my cousin, thing. Dear Tom and Lori yeah. from Alicia Rice of St. Louis, Louis, Missouri. Missouri. On the August 17th show of Breakfast Time, consisting of the water ski segment, uh, Lori said a certain word that shouldn't be said on TV. This is so untrue. I can't believe that somebody thinks that I did this. Hey, look, I know you're off the air. <laughs> even, though, <laughs> even though some people didn't catch it, I did. I'm 12 years old. My sister is 7. Watch your mouth. Well, you know what we thought we'd do, Alicia? Quit screaming your ears, Alicia. Yeah, That's Alicia, you I may have say. misunderstood what Lori yeah. said. And I just to prove so. it, uh, with no doctoring whatsoever, let's go back to the tape from that day, April, uh, August 17th. August 17th show. They started oh, shoot. Call them all across. Now they got to walk on the shoulders until they get to their partner and then fly down. Uh, well, you know, actually, we, we have another clearer tape. Oh, we do? Yes, a clearer tape where it just absolutely proves. Okay. Once and for all that that's what Laurie said. Can we run that other tape? Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> As you can see, she's clearly saying, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Over and over, over. and over. Oh, oh, oh Stapleton. <laughs> yeah. I never had Dream about you again. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 come here. Oh, come here. Come on. Come on. Come on, Paul. No, you're sitting down oh, next door. Come on. You know what? I would love to talk about this, but we're running really. Yeah. We got to get down. Uh, How can people have... write to us, an embarrassed producer right. on national television? Write to us at breakfast time, P.O. Box 824, <laughs> Madison Square Station, New York, New York. 1059-0824 or call us at two Conch Republic Minister of Speed. Oh, you know, we got a lot more show, show to shoot, but uh, first check out this information about a very special contest on Breakfast Time with Subaru. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the Dallas, okay. it goes a lot, lot deeper than that. Well, Spencer's down in Key West. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then uh, Gwen, who you'll be listening, Gwen, she bumped me off to go to Chicago. And now I'm finding out that I'm getting bumped off to go to Dallas. So we're just, you know, we've got to talk to Paul afterwards. Sure Dallas is shopping, it's excitement. You're not Sounds great. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I like doing with my time. Just make sure you send Phil some place where there's oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> so, Phil, you're not up for the Honolulu remote then? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Are you crazy? <laughs> That's the closest to New Zealand. That, that, there, there you go. Unless I'm going to go to Honolulu instead of Dallas next week. Well, the, well Dallas. the other thing, we were actually trying to compromise yeah, and right. actually focus <laughs> on that sharing. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you think yeah. of that? If the two of us left, there have to I think, You know what? Guys. I think it would not be well, a bad yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. This is just one of those things women don't understand about me. That's men. right. Oh, yeah. There you go. Right. Let's go to okay. Key West, where the level of understanding is dissipating with every drink. <laughs> uh, <and laughs> Spencer Garvet is in the car of the Republic. Hi, Spencer. Hey. That's right. I just want to show you the cover of today's uh, Key West headlines is, Weather Doesn't Halt Coral Sex. <laughs> <laughs> the well, down yeah. here, Nothing and from the Conch Republic, which is the southernmost point in the United States, the northernmost <laughs> point in the Caribbean, and it's no longer breakfast time, it's margarita and screwdriver time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, Spencer. Oh, my. Well, well, there's got to be a country song in that headline, I think. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Gwen McGee is in Waukee, Iowa, and she is uh, doing a man's job today. Gwen, good work. That's, ri that's right, Laurie. Thank you. I had a wonderful time. Well, you know, all the girls are inside because we've been working really hard today. So we